there's something you can add to that? Um, so, uh, yes, but um, I think it's going back to the, the, the original uh, yes. cutlery thing, I'm sort of thinking, in a way, aren't you just buying into, uh, I don't know, a designer might one not think about challenging things more, so it's like, we're going to take the cutlery, because that's what we've always eaten with, and we'll think about how to scent the cutlery, but I guess there's another level one might go to and say, uh, why do we need the cutlery at all? Uh, again, if you read your futurist cookbook, then it would be, you know, get rid of knives and forks and just bury your face in the plate. Um, maybe we don't want to go that far, but at least eating with the hands might be an interesting um, uh, intermediate step. And in that context of getting rid of the cutlery, how else might you deliver the fragrance of to enhance the food or to set the scene? And I suppose um, there's kind of a lot of interesting things on uh, gourmand perfumes on the one hand, perfumes you want to eat because they smell like fruits and uh, 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 recognizable edible objects, um, but also uh, work by people like uh, some Caroline Hopkinson, say in the UK, kind of a food design uh, artist there, where she would um, sort of spray people's wrists as if with perfume, and actually with a perfume of pepper, white pepper, um, and then give people strawberries to eat by hand. And then you kind of, it's kind of a merging of that gourmand perfume on the one hand with something that enhances the taste of the food, but also makes you question why do we need that cold, smooth stainless steel or silver? And maybe that eating with the hands is, is, is partly also brings you closer in some way than if you're sort of separated both from the other person and from the food by the Do by, you know by this, this by book by Milan Kundera? Uh, it's of this Indian boy that goes to England when he's young. And one of the scenes he describes is that, uh, obviously in India, has been eating with his hand the whole time. With his hand. Yeah. And then going to uh, Britain, having to eat yeah. with cutlery. And then he said it was like losing a sense yeah. because... I was already tasting with my fingertips. I could, could taste the it. Jan Martel, temperature. the life of pie. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of truth in that. A lot of people sort of write to me saying, you know, I feel silly. I feel stupid saying this, but you know, it does taste better to me. Yeah. Maybe and not for everybody. I suppose not for all foods. And maybe it depends on your, your the way we were brought up and where you were brought up. And if you were brought up without cutlery, then maybe it has a bigger beneficial mouse. impact. Whereas uh, for others, it just feels uncomfortable. Messy, dirty, uh, uncivilized. Um, but it's kind of a nice space, I suppose, to play in there from design and, 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 sort of, and the sort of psychological science of optimizing or changing or questioning the way the experience unfolds um, and turning it through design into something that is desirable, enjoyable, uh, uh, and shareable. Um, and on the other bit about the, the other ways of sort of the sharing thing, I guess. Um, I was mentioning some research I've been reading about, which is kind of on the, on the interface of the, of the design and the gastrophysics around mirrors and food, uh, based on something that came out this week, I think, from the Royal College of Art, some students who are trying to help in some small way solve the obesity crisis, and they have these half, half silver, these silvered half plates and bowls. So it looks like there's twice as much food there as there actually is, uh, and hopefully that means you, you'll be satisfied with less it's one of a number of uh, solutions, but one that uses the mirror in order to trick the brain into believing it's eating more. Uh, I, I, and you can put that with other work that just came out from Japan, which says for all those, you know, 60 or 70 percent of, of Japanese uh, elderly individuals who eat most of their meals alone now, who have no shared uh, table, for whom we know that food will not taste as good, for whom we know that they'll get into worse food behaviors, either not eating enough because they can't be bothered to cook, or eating too, too much because food portions don't come in the right sizes for one. Then these Japanese researchers have showed that if you um, just eat in front of a mirror, then uh, food tastes better um, and um, uh, you eat differently. It's like a virtual dining companion. Um, so maybe the mirrors have a, a role to play there. Kind of depends a bit what you're eating, if it's healthy or not. It depends if you yourself are obese or worried about your weight but certainly mirrors both at the level of the food itself and of the social interaction um, are throwing up some interesting ideas. I guess it's kind of a question of who, who knows how long lasting these things, maybe you get bored with your own reflection after, by lunchtime, but um, and maybe the, 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 mirrored, the mirrored plateware might work once, but a year later would it still trick your brain or would you have learnt, no, no, in fact, I only get half as much as it looks like I'm getting. Yeah, uh, those, these are the questions that need to be answered, yeah. but which as yet don't seem to have been um, 
Yeah, and lots of Skype uh, yep. dinners yep. are happening. Yep. Yeah. Uh, another one would be would be kind of the um, uh, the uh, mukbang in, in in Korea. These supposedly millions of uh, young individuals who eat alone also, but they just tune in over the internet to a broadcast jockey who's reasonably good good looking, but not especially so. We'll have a oh, big so plate full of um, chicken wings or something very so it's fatty. Some, someone you hire, kind of. No, it's just there's online and you just tune into the channel and. Oh, it's maybe a channel. Yeah, okay. and they're eating their own food, fatty, a huge bowl of chicken wings or something. <laughs> and you're at home eating whatever you're eating. And it's kind of social, kind of not. Uh, but who knows whether that makes the dining experience better, better than with being other with, with being with other people, better than being in front of yourself in the mirror. I don't know, but the fact that are supposedly millions of people now doing this. Uh, I don't know whether you'd feel sad or happy of the kind of technological solution to the growing uh, solitary existence, especially around meal times that we face. Um, yes. Uh, I just wanted to add to the eating with the hand part because you know that resonates with me very strongly. But I just wanted to add on the idea also of cooking with the hands, which um, you saw in the video I showed, where the woman. Um, dipped her hand in the sauce and pulled out the bay leaf to show it to me, and how important that those kind of acts of, of um, feeling your food as you're cooking it are in many um, traditions. And, uh, and I think, you know, even uh, Julia Child, one of her kind of radical things was, was to get Americans to think they could feel up a chicken and it would be okay. Uh, uh, and, and, and to me, it's, you know, these are not just different cultural traditions necessarily, but in fact a kind of a, a problem that we have in, in um, modern Western culture with the materiality of food and kind of wanting to be separated from that materiality. And so kind of putting ourselves back in touch with that materiality and even thinking of our bodies as tools. Uh, one of the things I was interested in was um, things like um, rolling phyllo dough in Greece, which people become very skilled at, 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 at rolling uh, such thin, thin phyllo dough. And, and the secret is that the rolling pins get thinner and thinner as you want to make your phyllo dough thinner and thinner. And it's almost when the rolling pin is, is on the verge of disappearance that you can make the, the best uh, or the, the thinnest feel of them. Thank you.